You are Locked On Dodgers Postcast. Part of Locked On Los Angeles on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, 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 that feels a little bit more like it. Welcome to the Dodger Postcast on the Locked On Dodgers podcast feed. You can also watch us live right after the game. That's the whole postcast idea. We come on right after the game on the Locked On Sports LA YouTube channel, the place to hang out when every game is done. I'm Pete Fox. Been covering sports since 2007 in LA for ESPN LA and NBC Sports Radio. Tonight's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and I'm a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now for free in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Well, the Dodgers came out uh, right out of the gate and got a run in the first, something they've done a lot recently, and that felt good, right? Uh, Sort of, (laughs) because... Uh, the last few times it's happened, it hasn't really turned into much, but I guess it's better to have runs in the first than to not have runs in the first, especially when you back them up with runs in the second, they grabbed a two, one, uh, I'm sorry, a three, nothing lead, uh, Teoscar Hernandez grounded into a double play with the bases loaded and, uh, nobody out. So it got the RBI on a fielder's choice, probably not exactly what he was hoping for. But nonetheless, run scored, and it got the ball rolling for the Dodgers on an interesting night from a lineup standpoint. The top three, uh, the same, Mookie Betts, who went off tonight. Really the story of the night, uh, the player of the night. We have a new feature coming up in the second segment called Diamond Dogs. Uh, Yes, I am a Ted Lasso fan, and that's where I stole that, but... We are going to run through the five most impactful, memorable, interesting, whatever you want to call them, hits, plays, uh, half innings from pitchers, something to that effect. It's a top five list, if you will. And uh, I don't know about you. I'm a fan of lists as long as they're not too long. I'm not a fan of like when Rolling Stone does the top 99 drummers of all time. I'm like, come on. Can't we just do 10 or 11, you know, or the other thing I hate is when uh, you'll see a list that it's the top 37. Why? Just to make me go, why is it 37? It should be 30 or 40, maybe 35, but I don't like it when they do those weird, odd numbers. It could be an even number, but nonetheless, it's, it should be around 30, 35, 40. That kind of a thing. I'm not doing that. Top five. I might throw in an extra, extra honorable mention of something like that. Uh, but we'll get to the diamond dog list in the second segment of tonight. Uh, bullpen night went really well. Um, oh, back to the lineup real quick. Teoscar Hernandez batted fourth. PK played second base tonight. Got the start there. Batted uh, fifth. Chris Taylor in left field again. Uh, Pajes, who we'll get into. The rookie started in center field for James Outman. Uh, Miggy Rojas started at third base. And Austin Barnes behind the plate, who had another fairly decent night, part of a decent performance for the bottom of the lineup, which really I kind of I'm starting to feel like if the bottom of the lineup does anything at all, then the Dodgers will win, right? And I've also made another observation or a realization, I guess is a better way of putting it that my standards for this team this season are going to be way too high. I am going to expect too much from them pretty much all season long, mainly because of the hype that has surrounded this team. It's probably a little unfair, uh, but I'm also going to do my best, especially through April and May and June, the dog days, you know, June, July, to try and be realistic but I am going to try to hold this team to higher standards, mainly because of Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Teoscar Hernandez. You know, the pitching staff is just loaded. Once Walker Buehler comes back, they're going to be even better. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, they paid a ton of money for him. And I know I said yesterday that it's not fair to 
grade or rate a player based on how much money he makes. But I also said, it's really hard to not do that. <laughs> it's, it's not fair, but life's not fair a lot of the time. So that's where I'm going to be coming from for uh, the majority of uh, these postcasts covering the Dodgers through this run uh, with this high paid team with extremely large expectations. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to be unfair. I don't think I'm going to be too hard on them when they lose because I just feel like even though my expectations are going to be high, th I don't think they're going to ultimately let me down. Uh, I, I feel like last night I was frustrated. Uh, one of my friends watched the postcast today <laughs> and he said, I could tell you were dying to say lollygaggers. And I've used that term frequently during my um, postcast for the Clippers. Uh, the joke from Bull Durham when uh, uh, Kevin Costner tells the manager that they're kids and they need to be scared. So he says, everybody in the shower. And then the, the, the assistant coach is like counting one Mississippi, two Mississippi. And then he comes in and he throws the bats on the floor of the shower. And he says, you know what you guys do? You lollygag the ball around the infield. You lollygag to first base. You know what that makes you? And the assistant coach, Robert Wall, says, lollygaggers. So that's kind of what I felt like. That's a very good uh, assertion on my feeling about the Dodgers last night, especially, and a little bit the night before as well. But last night for sure. That game felt like it was filled with lollygaggers. Yeah, Mookie Betts got a hit. Show you Tony Frey Freeman. They all got hits. Teoscar Hernandez had a couple of hits last night. Will Smith didn't play tonight, had a couple of hits last night. Yes, they all got hits, but they all just felt like they were lollygagging around the field, and I didn't like that. Tonight, none of that. Tonight, to me, was like practically flawless. Perfect, clean, fun, no stress, none of it. And, you know, Will Smith didn't play. A little bit different lineup. Bullpen game. Hurt gave up three hits over two innings, but no harm, no foul in the bottom of the first. Looked really, really good. They got the bases loaded and got out of that jam on a beautiful play from Kike Hernandez. Oh, God, he should be on the Diamond Dogs list. Oh, sorry. I have him on there for something else. Uh, Yarbrough was an absolute stud. We're going to get to that. His performance was definitely a plus. Joe Kelly, a little weird performance from Joe Kelly. Not his fault, but just a weird half inning. And then Daniel Hudson got the save, also solid. So we'll get to all of that a little bit more. And our new feature, the Diamond Dogs, will be coming up next here on the Locked On Dodgers postcast on the Locked On Sports LA YouTube channel. You can listen to us on the Locked On Dodgers podcast feed. All right, tonight's show is uh, brought to you by Monopoly Go. Do you have that competitive spirit like I do? Well, if you do, you should check out Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is, Messing around with all of your fellow competitors, friends, if you will. I can charge them extra rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who is the biggest Monopoly tycoon out there. You can team up with friends, family, people all around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game, join your friends, download it now, Monopoly Go. It's free at the App Store or in the Google Play Store. Tonight's show also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is where you get your tickets, last-minute deals, and it's always going to be very easy and beneficial to you if you're looking for tickets to a game. Uh, for example, tomorrow's Dodger game is a noon start, a little bit afternoon, 12.05, I think. Saw tickets on Game Time just now for twenty-one dollars. So if you can get the day off, <coughs> call in sick for that one. Twenty-one bucks to get into the ravine to see the Dodgers in the finale against the Nats. That's like it's it's almost like you're wasting money not going to that game. And and matinees this time of year when the weather is perfect, 
at Dodger Stadium. Not that, you know, in May and June, it's it's not perfect, but 21 bucks. I think I saw tickets for the Inland Empire 66ers for 31 bucks. So not that that's not fun, but I would always pick the Dodgers over the 66ers, 66ers, especially when it's $10 cheaper. Another great thing about the Game Time app is you get views from your seat. So you know exactly where you're sitting and what you're going to be seeing. They are obsessed with finding ways to keep you in the cheap department to save you money. As I said, you can save up to 60% on your ticket waiting as close to game time as possible, right up into the last minute, even an hour before the game starts. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem your code locked on L O C K E D O N for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, the lowest prices guaranteed. All right, Dodgers post a 6-2 win over the Nats, their second win in this homestand, and uh, bullpen day went just as planned, not too many issues. I thought the first inning was a little bit shaky when Hurt gave up three consecutive singles, or hits rather, and uh, but made it through that inning unscathed, made it through two innings <clears throat> unscathed, and Yarbrough came in, went five, or Yarbs, as they were calling him. That's That's such a baseball name, right? Yarbs, Mendoza, and uh, Stephen Nelson. <laughs> they were just having a good time. I re- I'm a big Jessica Mendoza fan because she knows the game and seems to have such a good time, like so much fun in the box and or the booth rather, and doesn't really take it seriously, but speaks the language, right? As much as Yarbs is a cheesy nickname, you know damn well that's what they're calling it, right? <laughs> And if your name was Yarborough, you'd probably want to be called Yarbs too. So uh, he went five. He's the guy that throws at about 74 miles an hour when he's humping up. 58 pitches, 38 strikes. He gave up two runs on two hits, striking out three. But all in all, ate up a lot of innings, and it was kind of <clears throat> no harm for the Dodgers uh, to give up those two runs because they were comfortably in front, mainly thanks to a beautiful, brilliant night from Mookie Betts going five for five. Two RBIs, upping his average to 388. Uh, As far as Joe Kelly, his weird uh, eighth inning almost had a clean inning, almost made it to the Diamond Dogs list. But um, Abraham, Abrams rather, uh, just barely nicked a ball, fouled one off, and then ended up walking. And then they intentionally walked Winker, who had hit a home run, uh, coming off of Yarbrough. So he went from having a perfect frame, clean inning to two guys on one from an intentional walk, the other from a, uh, a, a regular walk, but ultimately got that third out, got the hold uh, one walk. Like you don't get a, that's weird. Uh, I thought an intentional walk was considered a base on balls. I guess it is not. I did not know that. I feel really dumb. Um, one strikeout uh, again, clean frame, other than the walk. And then Daniel Hudson came in, uh, gave up one hit and one strikeout for the save 18 pitches, 10 of which were strikes. Here is our um, diamond dogs list. Chris Taylor would strike out against the little leaguer. Come on now. That is not fair. <laughs> eh, how big is this little leaguer? How, what, what age little leaguer are we talking? Chris Taylor tonight, just one K over two. Uh, did have a base on balls. So he's getting on base average going down. No 29. Now his on base percentage 167, and his slugging is also 29. Uh, as they pointed out tonight, I think Steven Nelson mentioned this. He's a very streaky hitter. So once he gets one to go, uh, I feel like he'll be okay. Kike hit a home run right before him. And I was kind of just wishing I don't want to say praying. It wasn't quite that big of a deal, but I was hoping, wishing and hoping that Taylor would hit a home run right behind Kike, man. That would have been epic. That would have been so cool for him to bust out with a home run back to back from Kike and uh, Taylor did not happen. Uh, So he's going to find it. I have faith. I'm, I'm a believer in Chris Taylor. I just don't know when it's going to happen, but 
I feel at some point he will uh, he'll take care of business. All right, uh, for our Diamond Dogs list, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, top five in this particular situation at bats of the night. In at number five, the rookie making his major league debut, Andy Pajes, uh, first pitch swinging in his first at bat for a single. Now this is a guy that uh, a lot of people have been high on for quite a while uh, in Triple A, seventy three plate appearances, his slashing. He was slashing 371 with 400, 452 with the on-base percentage and then slugging at 697 with five home runs, 694 with five home runs. So high expectations, had a great spring, and um, Trammell was doing nothing, so they sent him down and brought up Pajes. And I wasn't super familiar with <laughs> the pronunciation of the name, so as I was listening to the first inning in the car on the radio broadcast, Rick Monday kept saying it so fast. I thought he was calling him pothead. I'm like what? His name cannot be pothead. <laughs> so I went and looked at him. I'm like, oh, it's Pajes. Of course, I thought his name was Pages. <laughs> Didn't know. So uh, seems like the real deal. Lanky, tall, strong kid with a big swing. Uh, got a hit in his first at bat. That's sweet. Uh, for number four tonight on the Diamond Dogs list, Austin Barnes, an RBI single in the second. Uh, hit deep to the outfield that made it two nothing and Austin Barnes continuing to fill in very admirably one for four tonight uh, batting 308 with a 400 on base percentage and a 308 slugging percentage so uh, you know not hitting home runs with the bases loaded or anything but he is knocking people in, had the one RBI tonight, so that was sweet. Uh, in at number four on the Diamond Dogs list. Number three, Mookie Betts, an RBI double, which made him four for four at the time. Uh, he had a second. It was his second hit of the night. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was his second hit of the night, the RBI double. He was four for four, which then turned into five for five, and I, I couldn't uh, – I couldn't leave him off for number one. So he's also number one, but we'll get there in a second as to which one it was. <laughs> Obviously, probably the five for five. But uh, yeah, I was like four for four. That's worthy of being on the list. I don't know if it's number one, but then in the fifth, in the ninth, rather, an RBI single, uh, a two strike hit. I think that was probably as as awesome as the hit was for the, the two doubles. That piece of hitting he did in the ninth inning where he was, Choking up, two strike hit, uh, two strike swing with a pitch on the outside corner. He reaches out and pokes it past the second baseman for a single. That was fantastic. I love that kind of hitting where you're aware and you're uh, situationally hitting the ball to make him five for five. So uh, number three for Mookie Betts and number one tonight on the Diamond Dogs list. That's for number two, Kike's 431 foot home run. Uh, it was after 2K, so that had to feel really good for him. It's his first extra base hit of the season. It didn't really seem like it was that much of a bomb, but like 431 feet. I mean, Shohei Otani doesn't hit him that far. Yeah, I mean, of course he can, but we haven't seen it in a while. So uh, kudos to Kike, his first extra base hit of the season, his first home run of the season, a 431-foot bomb. There is your uh, Diamond Dogs list. We'll take another break and uh, we'll come back and get into uh, another new feature on the show. We're doing all kinds of new things here tonight on the Dodger podcast. We're turning a page and turning the corner just like the Dodgers did with a 6-2 uh, Another thing we're going to focus on is uh, a little feature called the Otani ticker. Every night, we're going to just look at Otani, right? For the kind of money he's earning, he deserves to be focused on a little bit more than we've been doing here on the postcast. Thanks for watching us. I'm Pete Fox. This is the Locked On Dodgers postcast on the Locked On Sports LA YouTube channel. We come on right after every Dodger game and break it down for you. Uh, you can also listen to us every day on the Locked On Dodgers podcast feed. And don't forget Jeff and Vince doing their thing right now as well, uh, or maybe in a little bit, and it'll be up tonight, later, and then available for you to watch and listen tomorrow morning. All right, tonight's show also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. There it is. LinkedIn Jobs is uh, very helpful when it comes to hiring people 
If you own a small business, LinkedIn jobs knows that your success all depends on the team that you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and free. LinkedIn jobs isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates to choose from. So easy. In fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. My wife and I are um, owners of a small business here in Riverside, California. We have a pottery studio and it's growing rapidly and we are in need of people uh, regularly more than we figured we would be not even one year into this thing. And we've gone to LinkedIn jobs more than once and found very good people very quickly. Uh, LinkedIn jobs is number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats. You're doing PR, you're running the business, you're working in the business, dealing with uh, customers. You might not have the right amount of time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn Jobs, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free on linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Ah, oh, you guys are killing me over here, Mr. Seabad. <laughs> this is worthy of being posted. CT3 now has an average that mirrors my blood alcohol content on St. Patty's Day. No bueno. <laughs> that is the funniest thing since I've started reading the comments, thanks to Craig, who was like, Why aren't you reading the comments? And I was like, What are you talking about? So uh since I started reading the comments, that's probably the funniest one that I've heard. And look, Chris Taylor deserves a little bit of ribbing, but he's a good guy and he's working hard. You can bet he's working his ass off, right? He is not taking this lightly. He's probably not sleeping right now. He probably thinks if I don't get my ass in gear real soon, uh, I'm going to be down in Oklahoma City, AAA, right? So he knows. He's aware. He's doing everything he can to put bat to ball and put ball into the outfield. So take it easy on Chris Taylor. He had two strikeouts. Are you sure, Craig? I thought it was only one tonight. Come on. He, he walked. So, and he only, Oh, that's because he had two at bats on a walk is not considered an at bat. Yeah, I know. James Outman also didn't look good tonight either. Striking out. <laughs> I, I feel like the strike, it, like, the strikeout, generally speaking, doesn't look good. He only had one strikeout, Craig. How dare you try to give Chris Taylor another strikeout? It's bad enough. And he can't get a base hit to save his life. But uh, he he only had one strikeout, according to the box score. Tonight was a 6-2 win, correct? Yes, I'm looking at the right box score, I hope. So here's the Otani ticker for tonight. Two for five, single in the first, ground ball to second. This is kind of weakish. And then his third at bat, the same exact thing, a ground ball to second. And then he flied to center field. Wasn't deep. It was rather routine. And then a base hit late in the game, a tapper to third that he legged out because he's lightning fast for a big man. And, uh, you know, he keeps getting on base, but he is not getting clutch hits. And I know that you guys want more from him. And I agree. I think we'd like to see more. His runners in scoring position number is like one for 19 now. It's just continuing to get worse. And yes, it's hard to argue with a 341 batting average and a 385 on base percentage and a 634 slugging percentage. But he is not hitting monster home runs. He's got a few. Uh, but he's not rushing the ball i think that way we expect so i'm not terribly upset he's a part of the you know part of the team he's a cog in the wheel and that's that's really all you can ask for this time of year and we just have to keep our fingers crossed that when it becomes more important in a few months <laughs> down the road that he is getting those clutch hits and in is hitting those towering shot home runs he's just not doing it right now right uh, I think every time he hits a fly ball to the outfield, everyone thinks it's going to be a monster blast, but it, it is not. So 
Uh, not there yet, but again, two for five tonight, nothing to complain about. And uh, our Doc Rivers file for tonight, I say two thumbs up, right? I know you guys want to fire them every time they lose, but tonight I think Doc Rivers, why do I keep calling him Doc Rivers? <laughs> Doc, Dave Roberts, uh, did a fine job, right? So when they win, doesn't he deserve a little bit of credit? Doesn't he deserve a round of applause? Way to go, Doc. You know, bringing in Daniel Hudson, giving, uh, um, uh, blah, what's the closer's name? Damn it. Uh, 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 uh John a blank had it in my head. Now it's gone. Uh, the normal Dodger closer last name starts with an E who's going to get there first. Am I going to get there first or is Craig going to get there first? Making me look stupid. Evan Phillips. Ah, I beat you, Craig. <laughs> Evan Phillips giving Evan Phillips the night off and uh, Hudson came in and closed the door down. Good call by Dave Roberts, AKA doc credit. Yes. Give him credit. Tell him that you apologize for wanting to fire him Sunday. Everybody over here. I think the only one that wasn't trying to fire him was Craig. I think Nando wanted him fired. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Seabad. Uh, I think Daniel Barry wanted him fired. Everybody wanted him fired. Fire Dave Roberts because the Dodgers lost to the Padres in April. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't happy about it, but I wasn't thinking that it was time to fire Dave Roberts. And the bottom line is all of you people that want Dave Roberts fired. And I'll be honest, 100% transparency right now. I fought against the let's fire Dave Roberts after embarrassing playoff losses for two or three years after the world series. When they lost to, I believe they lost to the Nats. They lost to the Padres. Well, last year I'd had enough and I jumped on that bandwagon as well. And I was like, look, Dave Roberts is not a bad manager, but I feel like they need a new voice in the postseason, just a new voice, a new approach, something else. So I was on that bandwagon for a little while, the frustration boiling over after losing in the first round to the Arizona Diamondbacks last year. So I've been there and I got into Facebook arguments with various Dodger fans, people that I went to high school with and you know, just the back and forth. And it's, it's, it's the same argument. If another person says fire Dave Roberts, I've had enough of you. It's that kind of a thing, you know? So at that point when I was like, I, I don't think I, cause I never said they should fire him. What I said was they should elevate him, move him up to the front office, make him the GM, or I'm sure they could find a position for him, you know, director of baseball operations, something like that, and put a different person in there to manage different voice. That's all I said. So I didn't, I didn't advocate for him to be fired. No pink slips. Just let's get another manager in there, but I still don't know. And this is a conversation that we'll have at another time as the season comes to a close, uh, when they get into the postseason. if, if they do, I mean, knock on wood, everything, this team doesn't make the postseason. heads are going to roll. I think if they get ousted and don't make the playoffs, that could be what cost Dave Roberts his job. You fire Dave Roberts people every time the Dodgers lose. If they don't make the playoffs with this team, someone's going to have to answer for that, right? But then again, they might be like, let's run it back one more, one more time when Shohei Otani is pitching, right? That's probably what the line will be that they'll tow, right? Uh, a few more things on Yarbs before we get out of here. Yarborough, uh, uh, he had a 10 pitch inning in the fifth and a six pitch inning in the seventh. That's high quality pitching right there. So good stuff from him. Bullpen was good. Bullpen day was good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm feeling good about the way things went tonight for the Dodgers, a six, two win over the Washington nationals, which never felt like there was an opportunity for the Nats to uh, rally and come back and for the Dodgers to let one slip away again. Uh, tomorrow, the finale is 12-10.
And a rookie will start, Landon Knack. That should be fun as well. So join me after. I'll be right back here on the Locked On Dodgers podcast feed. And you can watch on the Locked On Sports LA YouTube channel, the place to hang out when every game is done. Um, yes, I know. The Dodgers, Mr. Seabad, you're right. The Dodgers have never missed the playoffs once Dave Robert was was uh, hired. So it's hard to fire a guy who gets the team to the playoffs every single year. So what happens in the playoffs, I don't believe is Dave Roberts' fault. He's involved, of course. You know, his hands aren't completely tied. But I think there are other powers that be with more authority making calls that Dave Roberts just has to go along with. But as I said, we'll get to that in April. I'm sorry, in August and September. And October, but not now. Tonight, a nice 6-2 win. They'll wrap up the series tomorrow against the Nats at 12-10. Uh, Landon Knack versus Jake Irvin. Thanks for joining me tonight here on the Locked On Sports LA YouTube channel and listening on the Locked On Dodgers podcast feed on PFAX, Pete Fox. We will talk again tomorrow, uh, let's say 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Have a good night tonight. Take care, and we'll talk tomorrow.